Up next, Mo has resurrected a classic review from 2013, looking at the board game Quarriers. All right, with quarantines and everything else going on right now, I am sad to say I have not had a chance to get in any plays of my games on the pile of obligation. So I apologize, companies who gave me review copies, but I'm sure you understand with what's going on right now. I just can't fire through all those games like I was able to when we were having gaming events every weekend. So I needed something to review this week, so I thought it'd be a good chance to resurrect one of my classic game reviews. So before I did this whole bellhop thing, I used to run a website called the Windsor Gaming Resource, and on that site, I published a bunch of reviews of games I played. Now, these are reviews. This is long before any publishers knew who I was. This is all stuff I bought and I liked and I wanted to talk about. Now, previous re-reviews like this have done really well. So we've done Race for the Galaxy and Alhambra, and I actually get a lot of positive feedback on those. Actually, last show we had someone write in and thanking me for the Race for the Galaxy review. So I thought, why not? Let's do another one of these. And on the blog, I'm going to release it tomorrow for, you know, Throwback Thursday. That's kind of an online thing. Just because it's old doesn't mean we won't review it. Yes. Sometimes the classics are where it's at, either great in and of themselves or as a place in history. Yeah, very true. So first off, I want to thank you Patreon patrons for helping me pick which classic review to resurrect this week. I gave them a choice of four different games, and they're the ones that picked Quarriers. So that's the one we're looking at today. Now, this Quarriers was designed by Mike Elliott and Eric M. Lang. Those are big names nowadays in board gaming that people may not have been a big back then. Those are some famous designers. It features art from Jay Lonnie and Chris Ramo. Uh, it was published by WizKids in 2011. Now, I am not going to go over the entire review here on the show. Uh, I basically reposted the original review word for word over on the blog. I was definitely a little more verbose back in 2013 than I am now. So if you do want to see the whole thing, just go over to the blog. And uh, so interestingly, it was released in 2011, but it was actually awarded a, uh, a prize at Origins in 2013, the year you wrote this, uh, uh, this review. There's a reason for that. So I didn't dive into this here in the review at all. So when Couriers, the original came out, it was in a tin, in a cube that looked like a die. So kind of good marketing, but everyone hated the tin. It was, you couldn't fit it on your game shells. It didn't store the components separately. You always had to split up the dice at the beginning of every game. There was no play mats. There were a lot of issues with the first printing of the game. So what I actually reviewed was the first deluxe box set that came out. So it's the second edition or second printing of Couriers. And that's the one that won all the awards. And don't so forget that's the reason for that one. Don't forget that's Couriers with an exclamation mark. Yes, Couriers, I should say. All right, so Couriers is a dice-based bag building game where players all start with the same set of basic dice. Players then draw a number of dice from their bag, roll them, and then use them to do things. One of the things you're going to roll are like a, man, uh, a drip of water, it looks like. It's a mana-like resource, like Think Magic the Gathering, called Quiddity that you use to summon your monster dice, which are other dice you roll with monsters on them. The basic monster in the game uses the symbol of a pawn from chess. These all go into a player's active area. So use your Quiddity to activate your pawns, and now you have your pawns in your active area. Monsters that are still in a player's active area by your next turn are how you score points. So you summon that pawn, and if nothing kills your pawn, it's still there at the start of next turn, you're gonna get one point. Other monsters, of course, are gonna be worth more points. The goal is to hit a certain point threshold, and this is based on the number of players. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but say it's 10 points for two players and 15 for three or whatever. After scoring points, after you get your points for your monsters that are in play, you can then attack with the monsters that are there. Uh, this is interesting, because depending on the number of players, you always attack everyone. So if I attack with my pawn, I'm attacking everyone else with that one pawn, which is an interesting way to do it. Attacking combat is pretty much Magic the Gathering. You have an attack and a defense value. If my attack's higher than your defense, I defeat your die. Nice and simple. No, there's no attacking other players. So it's not Magic. It's not Star Realms. There's no way to attack the other player. The only thing you're doing is killing their monsters that are in play. So is there really a difference between attacking a player versus their monsters? Do players even have health? No, there... like I said, there, there is no attacking players in this. Right. Not at all. You can't. All you're doing is trying to make sure that the person doesn't have monsters at the start of the turn, because if they do, they score points. Right. Now, after combat, you're going to look at any of your leftover quiddity. So whatever you didn't use to summon monsters, and you're going to use that to buy new dice from a central market. 
Uh, the market's made up of monsters and spells. On the blog, I get into details of how many of each, but it doesn't really matter. These are how you get new dice and new more powerful dice. And similar to most deck building games, the more quiddity you spend, generally the more powerful the creature you get. So really calling this a board game is a bit deceiving. It's really a card game with a bag building dice game. Yeah, pretty much. There is technically, there's, there's a player board to keep track of where your dice are. So like they have to go into an active area when they're active, and then they go into a used pile, which is on a little player board, and then the used pile sits there until you need to reshuffle your bag or pull, redo your bag. So then you grab everything in your used pile and throw it in. And there's actually some strategy there where you might want to put stuff into your active pile so it doesn't get cycled through your bag. So there's some board elements. Like there's 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 probably more than say Dominion. Overall, it's a pretty simple to teach game. Like I just gave you the really basic overview. View the only thing you need to know is what the different symbols on the dice mean to really be able to play based on what I just said. And what it does have is a ton of variety. The original game comes with over 130 dice. There are a ton of different cards. And what's impressive is there are multiple monster cards for each die. So there's like a weak green die, like the, the green die is a slime. And there'll be three different dice representing slime, each with different abilities. So you're going to randomize which slime's in play when you use slime. So it's just a huge amount of replayability. Like It is highly likely that you'll never play two games of Quarriors identical. Now, back when I first reviewed this game, looking at what I had thought back in 2013, I was blown away by the, the mechanics of this game, the whole theory of... I, instead of being a deck builder where I'm building my deck, I'm building this bag full of dice and I'm pulling out dice and I'm I'm rolling my dice and some of them are monsters. That just blew me away. I thought it was completely unique and completely innovative. Like to me, it felt like uh, an evolution of deck building and an evolution is in a step up in a good way. Though there was one drawback is holy randomness, Batman. Like, you already have randomness in deck builders, right? So what's in the central market, of course, is randomized every game. So that's going to affect the game. What you draw in this, what you pull from your bag is going to matter, right? So you've got those two elements, but then what you've pulled are dice, and every die has six sides, right? Like, that's just a the crazy number of variables to keep track of. You're, you're, you're just, everything's random. And one quote that I liked, that this is my one complaint, and I like the way I worded this, that from the original review, so I'm going to quote here. So even though you may have saved up and bought that awesome dragon, he's not going to help you much at all if all you do is keep rolling one quiddity on that dragon die every time. And that is the, the fall down of Quarriers, I find. Overall, though, I, it was a positive review. It was, it, I found the randomness tolerable, and I enjoyed the game and pretty much gave it a thumbs up by the end. Well, there are a lot of folks out there who disapprove of games that not only feature randomness, but square it by layering randomness yes. on top of randomness. And that's just it, right? Like, it's just, it's randomness on top of randomness on top of randomness. So what about now? What are your thoughts on Quarriers today? All right, so most of what I had to say in the review still stands. I, I still think it's a really neat mechanic. It's 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 well done. It's it's cool. Um, I went on to play Quarriers many times after this review. Um, I even went on to feature it at some local events. I hosted a Quarrier night at Brimstone Games. I even included it in a great Canadian board game blitz. So I thought this game was worthy, was tournament worthy. Like I thought that, that you get ranked points. Four players can sit down and one player can play better than others. So to me, if I throw it in a blitz, it means I think it's a solid game. Multiple expansions were released, all with a Q name. Each added some little extra something. Some had giant dice. Others had more monsters. There were new spells and so on. And I picked up most, not all of them. So I noticed you used the past tense in all your, you're talking about it playing. Yeah, because, yeah, definitely. Because something happened that had me stop playing Quarriers completely. And I honestly have not touched the game since. Late in 2014, WizKids, the company that produced Quarriers, released a brand new dice-based dueling game called Marvel Dice Masters, Avengers vs. X-Men. Now, I admit, I didn't actually try it when it came out. I didn't get into it until 2015, and that's because it kept selling out everywhere. This was literally the Keyforge problem back in 2014. You could not find decks, well, decks, dice, whatever you want to call it. You couldn't find starter packs for Dice Masters anywhere. Now, this new dice game is an evolution of Quarriors. It took the basic mechanics of Quarriors and refined and fine-tuned every little bit of them. They also changed the game to a collectible format starter sets and random booster packs now that part i'll admit i didn't really appreciate though i did because oh my god my first booster is sitting in a coffee shop opening them i just had that joy of going back to opening up magic packs so i i hate well i hate it and i loved it all at once 
Now, Dice Masters moved the game further away from its deck building roots, like further from games like Dominion, uh, and closer to more dueling games like Magic the Gathering. They completely removed the wilderness. There's no central market anymore. Instead, players do pre-game deck building or dice building or both, right? Because the, de the decks just tell you what the dice represent. So you would get your card your, for Spider-Man, you would pick your Spider-Man card and then decide to buy one, two, three, or four Spider-Man dice to have in your game. Um, so you're, it's all pre-constructed, right? So now players sit down to play, each player would have their own set of cards and their own set of dice. The goal was completely changed. So the goal went back to what we talked about earlier. Now you are attacking the other player. So yes, you can defend with your heroes in front of you, but the goal is to knock the other opponent's hit points down to zero. And you're using heroes and villains to do it. Well, it's a familiar mechanic. Most of us just don't even think yeah. twice about now. It's just how, how else we're going to do that's things how you like play that. Dueling that's games. You, you attack each other, right? And you defend with your summoned stuff in front of you. Yeah, just overall, Dice Masters to me was a better game. Uh, it was quicker. Uh, they had more dice that mitigated the randomness. They had some really neat generic powers that were based on the, the, the j basic dice you start with. Um, I like the Marvel setting better. Like I'm into fantasy, but like Courier's was completely generic fantasy. Whereas being able to fight, you know, Spider-Man versus Doc Ock, I'm into that. I dig that. And I like the force building aspects. I like the fact that I went out and bought booster packs and I could make a, a theme deck. I could team up Wolverine with Spider-Man and throw in Kitty Pride because she has a neat force field effect. The combos with, you know, the, that's the whole thing, right? Uh, due to that, I never played Courier's again. I literally did not keep it. Um, I, I like didn't, never played it. i kept it for a while uh to bring out the public play events but to be honest it's gone i sold it to someone at some point i don't remember when maybe i put it in an extra life auction i'm not sure where it went but i no longer have it now i will say there are a couple advantages couriers does have over dice masters so there are reasons people might want to seek this game out one is it plays four players dice masters is a two-player duel yes there are some variant rules for playing multiple players but just like trying to play multiple players in magic or sorcerer they're not optimal. You want to play two players. The other thing too, though, is Quarriers is ready to go. It is a pick up and play game. I can show up to a gaming event. Sean can come down from, from Hamilton. I can throw out Quarriers and we can just, here you go. Here's the stuff. We put out the market. Let's play. There's no deck building, right? There's no, we don't each have to have our own set of the game. There's none of that. You just sit down and play. Whereas if we want to play deck masters, either I have to build Sean a deck or he's got to come down and I got to show him all his cards and he's got to build his own deck. And we can't just sit down and just play where you can do that with couriers easily. Yeah, it's a def definite advantage for uh, drop of the hat plays uh, unless you're, you know, in a league sort of setting with, uh, you know, magic type players who yeah. have their dice masters set all ready to go. Uh, yeah. It's not as it's not as, uh, you know, casual. True. And there is, of course, organized play for this. So at this point, I can't recommend Quarriers. Like, but you know what? If it sounds cool, if what I just described sounds neat to you, like this whole bag building dice rolling mechanic sounds interesting, I do suggest checking out Dice Masters. Now, at this point, there are a ton of different sets out there. Uh, it's not just Marvel. Uh, there's DC, there's Warhammer 40K, there's Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, and one of their latest sets is WWE. So you can even do wrestlers with Dice Masters. And what's cool that they've done to many of us who are not a fan of the collectible element is they have released a lot of these licensed variants in standalone, what they call campaign boxes. So you can pick up a TMNT campaign box. You can pick up a WWE campaign box that removes the collectible element. And then you have everything ready to play right in the box with some pre-constructed decks or pre-constructed, whatever you want to call them, forces on each side. Well, for a more in-depth look, and a reposting of Mo's 23rd, full 2013 Quarriers review, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.